Hello, my name is Ingrid Johnsrud and I'm a professor of psychology at Queen's University. Have you ever noticed that when you're in a group, especially a group of strangers, you act differently? One example of this is when we witness an emergency and nobody helps. Why is this? How can seemingly caring people behave so callously? Social psychologists have studied this phenomenon, known as bystander apathy. And they now have a good understanding of the factors that cause us to ignore those in distress when we're in groups of strangers. In a number of experiments, people were left to witness a staged emergency, such as smoke filling a room or a person in distress in the next room. How the person behaved depended on whether they were alone, with friends, or with strangers. What do you think they discovered? Hi. My name is Jill Atkinson, and I'm also a psychology professor at Queen's University. And I'd like to explain what students would learn about bystander apathy in an introductory psychology course. What researchers have discovered is that when we witness an emergency, if the other people around us are calm and they seem to be ignoring the situation, we're less likely to think it's as serious as we initially thought. This is called pluralistic ignorance, and it's when each individual in a group notices that no one else is reacting to a situation and then they decide that the situation isn't very serious and therefore they won't react either. Secondly, what researchers have found is that people when they're in a group are less likely to step forward and help in an emergency. So you may be thinking, well, someone else is more qualified or surely someone else will help and therefore you don't act. And this diffusion of responsibility means that each individual in the group feels less responsible for acting than if they were alone. So for example, if you come across an emergency and you're all alone, the burden of helping falls squarely on your shoulders. You're more likely to step forward, even if you're not sure what to do, even if it's risky or stressful. But in a group, we're less likely to do that because we don't feel responsible. These are some of the social factors or the group factors that explain why people won't respond to a situation when they're in a group versus when they're alone. The good news is that this knowledge can also help us figure out how to combat bystander apathy. So for example, let's say you find yourself um, in an emergency situation, or you witness one. You can do two things. One is to try to reduce pluralistic ignorance by letting people around you know that the situation is serious, that it's an emergency. So you might say, help, I'm hurt. Or you might say, look, there's smoke, this is an emergency. Secondly, if you want to reduce diffuse responsibility, you could ask a particular individual to take a specific action. So for example, you might say, you in the red shirt, call 911 or please help me lift this heavy branch and people will then come to your aid. This is bystander apathy, one of the things you might learn about in an introductory psychology course.